This is Mango, and he's uh, 20 and a half, and he's been with me since he was six weeks old. I guess around 17, I no noticed him starting to slow down. He was starting to get dementia. He was starting to not really know where things were, what was going on. If he continues to decline rapidly in the next few days, um, I think we'll have to we'll have to maybe help him along. Guinness is the best. How do you even characterize him? I wouldn't even necessarily say dog because that seems like too constricting a box for him. Like he's just an amazing soul who happens to be in a dog body. Adopting a dog or owning a dog is kind of morbid in the sense of when you have a baby, the whole notion that you hope is that like your kid will bury you one day or your kid will plan your funeral, not the other way around. What kind of dog can I take anywhere? Um, <laughs> and it was, it was Fidel. This is Ollie. <laughs> Ollie is my handsome 15 year old whippet. What I've been told about his eye is uh, that one of his first owners had an abusive boyfriend. There was some violence going on in the house and at some point it was taken out on Ollie for whatever reason. You would really never know that he's been through something like that, uh, meeting him because he's just so calm and gentle. So I'm a naval officer, so I just wanted to be in the Navy. I wanted to name him after someone who was Navy. Harry DeWolf was um, a bit of a Canadian hero. Not that we have too many Canadian military heroes that people know about, but he was a uh, commanding officer of Haida, and he picked up survivors from um, another one of our ships that uh, was hit by torpedoes. No, like, whoop, like that. Thanks, keep my feet warm. You're good. This is Frida. Uh, she has a million nicknames. <laughs> Lately it's Pickle, I don't know why. I struggle with my mental health. I uh, have um, depression and one of the hallmarks of depression for me was just not wanting to get out of bed and not wanting to get dressed, not wanting to take a shower, just being really super bummed out and really, really lazy and really tired. And you can't be that with a dog. You have to get up and get out. And, and that helps. Getting, your, getting up some days and taking her out was all that I would do. That was, and that's fine. That's my goal for the day, is to make sure the dog's taken care of. Do you want to sit? No, no. Yeah, let's do this. Uh, I was running an event. You asked me to hang out after uh, one of the night trivias. Um, and then the next night, when we hung out, Princey had just gotten out of his surgery uh, when he had his eyes removed. And the moment Seb kind of walked into the apartment, Princey started bleeding from his eyes, which was really scary. So yeah, I panicked in that moment. I said, sorry, random guy from the bar, you need to leave. Um, and he, and Seb was determined, he's like, you're not going to the emergency alone, I'll go with yeah. you. So he's got these very cool looking doggles, which seems funny for a blind dog that he would have any kind of glasses, but um, it does help protect his eyes. So he doesn't love them, but we try to tell him how handsome he is all the time. I get the elevator to tell him how handsome he is and strangers who try to Snapchat him. It's fine. Just tell him he's cute. <laughs> this is Daisy. <laughs> Daisy is probably like around 13 or 14 years old now. We don't really know. She was first in the shelter here. Um, she was adopted out and she was brought back a couple of days later for biting the woman who had adopted her, um, which is how we sort of <laughs> circumstantially met. When I got Dingo, it was probably like the lowest point in my entire life. Like I lived with my brothers and one of them is evil and one of them is just like, schizophrenic and autistic and has a lot of issues of his own and you know my my 
paychecks were going fully to like rent and feeding my brothers. My mother was hassling me literally every day. And so when I finally started to feel like I had some like feet under me financially and had a place where I thought I was going to be able to live for a while <laughs> where we weren't hopefully going to get evicted immediately, I went and I got Dingo. Jack, come, 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 come over. With my family arrived in Canada in 1995, originally from Yugoslavia, and we bought for our son there English Cocker Spaniel. And uh, we left him behind. When we arrived here, we learned that we supposed to do opposite, to bring him here. I don't know. I'm a little bit emotional, sorry. It's funny, because I had that experience in university and I was so sick for so long, I feel weirdly okay with my own mortality. I'm not sure that I believe in an afterlife, and I think that's okay though. Um, but there's something special about certain deaths that I think you can't adjust to, and Guinness would be one of them. And I think the loss of control at the end is very difficult to accept and is something definitely that I'm not looking forward to with Ollie. Whenever Dingo is sick and I have to start thinking about the fact that one day he will die, then in those moments, my entire belief system changes. <laughs> and it's like, but one day I'll see him again, you know? <laughs> like, like just I need that comfort of like, this isn't a goodbye forever. I don't want to come home to a dead dog. And that's really scary to think about. But like you always like you start to like do things like I'm like checking or like I'll wake up in the night, usually like around three o'clock and I check to make sure that she's still breathing. My mom died when I was younger and I've come from a really big family. So I've been through that like with people. Um, so I think that I would probably have to help take the lead on, <laughs> on dealing with what we would do, what we would do. Um, I think I deal with my own by planning for him. Like there's a folder in our dresser upstairs for BJ. If something happens to me and it's like, here's what you do. Like here's who you call and here, is, here are all the yeah. things and their insurance and everything else. I think that my biggest obstacle right now is that like when I think about the day where I have to decide, I don't know that I can make the decision. That's the kind of burden that we bear having seen your dogs is the, the constant questioning of, is it going to be this week? Oh no, look, they rallied. Oh, he wants to go for a walk again. He stopped eating for two days, you know, or she um, constantly uses the house as a toilet now. I'm, I'm hoping to not have to see her decline. Like in a perfect world, I'll wake up and she'll be dead and she will have died in her sleep and everyone was fine. That would be perfect. Well, actually, I don't like to think about that moment, you know, either. It would be painful. You used to. It's like part of family, you know. Jack. Yeah. You are good. Good boy. We all wish that our dogs could live forever, but I think that they live for the right amount of time to have such a rich experience and uh, to learn what they need to learn and to give off like all the massive amounts of love that they do. I probably still have that as we all do when we're really young, think you're gonna live forever. And then you realize, wow, I'm, you know, middle-aged. And then it's like, well, it's only middle-aged if you live till 110. <laughs> I'm really happy with like, where I am in my life. If I were to die tomorrow, I don't want to die tomorrow, but if I were to die tomorrow, I'm actually okay. I'm all right. Because I've done some things that I wanted to do and I've created people and met people and loved people and, and I'm down. 20 New Year's Eves together. You know, we don't, we don't really go out much anymore at New Year's Eve and we just kind of hang out at home. And uh, my husband fell asleep on the couch this year. And Mango and I were the only ones awake to see the ball drop. So two full decades of New Year's Eves, buddy. Can't ask for more than that.